Hello, and welcome to the most highly requested YouTube video I've ever made. The original Iron Man video did very well. It's one of the best videos I've uploaded this year. And then I released a breakdown, and that got even more views. And on the back of that, I got a million requests to make a tutorial series. Because I anticipate this video will get a lot of views, I'm going to do a very quick self-plug. In the description below, there is a link to my Patreon, and for a dollar, you can get all the project files from this video. That's the Iron Man rig, the suit, the robotic arm, all of that, and all of the project files from all of my previous videos as well for a single dollar. So, with that out of the way, let's make an Iron Man suit up sequence. The model that I used for this is from 33D.com. It's the same model that I used in the last video, but this time round, because I had some more time to make this, I up some of the model, which I'll talk about in a second. But yeah, this model is made by Dead Code 3. It's a really good model. I'll leave the link to this in the description. Grab yourself the model, and then this will be our starting point for the rest of the video. Once you have the model downloaded, it's time to jump into Blender. What do you want, Wacom? Update. God damn it. Okay, so step number one, obviously import the model. I believe it's an OBJ. So we're gonna go import wavefront OBJ. And then when you import the model, it's gonna be absolutely massive and also have lots of clipping problems for some reason. I think that might be just because it's massive. Let's make it a more reasonable size. Yeah, there we go. It's just because it's enormous. If you look at the dimensions tab over here, if you press N, the dimensions here will tell you how tall it is. So for example, I'm 170 centimeters tall. I know I'm very short. So if I make this 1.7 meters, then this Iron Man suit will match my proportions exactly. You might even want to go a little bit taller because obviously the suit will be slightly larger than your body. So let's address the elephant in the room. On free3d.com, this says it's rigged. And as you can probably see, there's no armature on this. It has all of these control points and it has the actual uh, rig inside it. If I look here, I don't know if you can make it out, but basically there's a circle here for the ankle and then there's a bone. So I think what's happened is the person that made this left the armature in the file when they turned it into an OBJ, hoping that people could use it to rig. But OBJs can't store armature information. So essentially the rig has just got turned into a mesh, which is kind of annoying. So all of these control points that should be like empties and stuff are actually just geometry. So unfortunately, we have the tedious process of going in and deleting all of that, which is a little bit painful, but it's fine. I found the easiest way to do it is just to go into edit mode, go into wireframe, and to get rid of these um, control points, you can just select them because they're kind of away from the body, so it's quite easy. You can use circle select and B to do box select or whatever. But if you look closely, you can see all these extra pieces that are kind of protruding from the mesh that look really bulky. This is the actual armature that got turned into a mesh. So we have to delete all of this as well. And there's all of these little bits that kind of stick out of things that are the kind of small control points for all the flaps. So you have to be quite thorough going through and make sure you get them all. There's ones on these flaps here. They're in the shins. They're sticking out of the rib cage here. They're in the arms. Oh yeah, and they're all in the fingers as well. I forgot about that. Just saying, avoiding this process alone is probably worth paying the $1 to get the Patreon files because it's already done for you. And then when you think you've got most of them, hit X and do delete vertices. Probably a good idea to save at this point because you don't want to lose all of that hard work. You might notice there's a few areas where the geometry goes a bit dark. It looks like it's kind of glitching out a bit, like here on the knees. That is Blender trying to do its weird smoothing thing automatically. And uh, normally what you can do is come under here and then go to normals and turn on auto smooth. But as you can see, it's grayed out and it's already on. What you have to do is go into edit mode, select everything, and then search for uh, clear split normals, I think it's called. Aha, my mistake. It's changed in Blender 2.9. Now you go into the geometry data tab and press clear custom split normal data and now auto smooth will be enabled and you can turn that on and it won't look all dodgy anymore so now the model's isolated there's no extra unwanted geometry we can start doing some stuff with it the first thing i did last time is make these two leg flaps the same because when the armature is applied you want it to be symmetrical and everything else on the model is symmetrical apart from these for some reason so jump into edit mode just press l on this and then delete it and then what you can do is select the other flap then press full stop and select 3d cursor as your pivot point and then press Shift D to duplicate, and then press Scale X minus one. And that will essentially flip it in the X axis and the center point will be the 3D cursor, which is currently in the center of the scene. If it's not, make sure you press Shift S and do cursor to world origin. Otherwise you'll end up mirroring it in some random direction. I've also just noticed there is one extra piece of the armature geometry on the floor there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so now to the best of my knowledge, this is perfectly symmetrical, which is what we want. So now the next thing I did is I up some of the areas of the model that are a little bit low resolution. I didn't do this last time and now I kind of wish that I had because it looked a little bit blocky in some of the close-ups. So things like these circles that are just octagons or whatever these are with eight or 10 sides, 
they're obviously supposed to be full circles but i guess this was made for maybe a game engine or something so it's a little bit lower poly i will say if you don't have a pretty good computer you might not want to do this step because adding all of the extra geometry makes it a little bit slower when you're rigging but personally i think it's worth it and it makes it look a lot more realistic obviously so all of the things that i chose to up res are the circles so i'm going to go in and press l on all of the little circular bits so once they're all selected press p and then selection which will separate them into a separate mesh then you can select them on their own and you can either go over here and add a subdivision surface modifier or you can be cool like me and press ctrl 1 which is the shortcut one does a pretty good job if i turn this on and off you can see what it's doing last time i did two and again i think that was a little bit overwhelming for the computer i'm also going to do these panels on the legs i think i also did these bits on the arms because they look a little bit fruity and i'm probably going to do the same to these front bits as well at the join where the elbow is the model has some overlapping faces i guess this is meant to be like the inside of the suit but it looks a bit stupid so what i did was just delete it and replace it with a cylinder okay so now what i'm going to do is go through and apply all of the modifiers so that that actually turns it into geometry so it's a little bit less heavy to compute once the rigging and stuff has started and the next step is to turn it all into one object again so i'm going to hit a to select all and then Control j is the shortcut to join everything back into one object next up we're just going to patch the holes in the elbows here i didn't do this previously but i've just had an idea that might look a bit better than just sticking a cylinder in if you select this part of the arm and then press shift d and just x and just move it over a bit this will probably look a lot better you would never know that, that wasn't meant to be there perfect so the same on this side and bam that looks like it's working perfectly so now probably the final stage for this video before you start rigging is you have to separate all of the objects into the different parts that are going to be attached to the bones so for example the torso the shoulders the forearms the head the neck the legs this is probably the most tedious process of the whole thing and i never imagined i would be doing this twice on the same model so if you imagine how the skeleton's going to look we're going to have a bone for the thigh and then a bone for the calf so basically you want all of the thigh to be an object and then all of the calf to be an object and then we're also going to separate all of the parts that are going to be the flaps so jump into edit mode and then just start pressing l on all of the main parts then once you've got it all again hit p separate by selection and then a good thing to do as you're going through and separating them is also name them so it's easier in the rigging process so if you hit f2 that's the shortcut for rename and i'm going to rename the thigh to thigh.l because it's the left thigh and then it's just rinse and repeat for the whole thing so we go through and select all of the parts for the right thigh p separate by selection f2 and then thigh.r for right thigh. Oh, actually, I missed one bit for the uprising. I did all of these internal bits as well and press control one to add a subdivision. Select that and then select the main object, press control J to join them together. The naming for all the little bits, like all these extra flaps can get a little bit complicated. You can name them whatever you like, really, as long as you are able to keep track of them. One thing that's quite helpful for viewing all of the objects independently is you can come to the shading options and then change color to random. And this will assign a random color to every object that's separate. So you can see all of the stuff that I separated out down here is now different colors. And everything up here that I haven't separated yet is all one color. The torso is by far the hardest bit because there's so many tiny pieces on it. I'm going to go in and just quickly separate these back parts, add a subdivision surface, apply the modifier, and then merge it back into the other object. And then obviously we want the mask to be able to open. So I'm going to select all of the parts of the mask that are going to move. Probably going to delete these internal bits because I want to be able to actually see into the eyes. And then I added a subdivision surface onto this as well, just to smooth out those eyes a little bit. I always hate rigging and separating hands and fingers because you have to do it so many times. Basically, you want to have names for all of the fingers and then number them one, two, and three, or just one, two for the thumb. It doesn't matter what you call them, but just keep it consistent. I do thumb and then so thumb one, two, index one, two, three, middle one, two, three, ring one, two, three, and then pinky one, two, three. Also on this model, there's a joint in between the fingers. So you just want to make it part of either, you know, the top or the bottom. So for example, for the thumb, let's just say these two are going to be thumb one dot L. And then this is going to be thumb two dot L. I'm not going to show you the whole process because this is going to take a while. I'll just do it off camera. Okay, and about 15 minutes later, I've done it. As you can see, all of the objects are now different colors depending on how they're separated. So basically we've got the feet, and then the legs and then all of the flaps and stuff on the back of the legs the leg flaps i've separated out the knees these knee joints here they're going to be able to rotate independently i've also done the same for the hips here uh, obviously the thighs the pelvis the core the torso then the neck the helmet and the mask and then we've got the back flaps I've made these separate pieces of the spine independent so that they can open and close like I showed in the trailer. I've made these two pieces of the shoulder pads separate objects, then the rest of the bicep, and then the forearm, and then the wrist flap, 
and then the hand and then obviously all the parts of the fingers and essentially that's all of the different pieces we're going to do and then in the next video we're going to create bones for all of those objects and parent them all to the bones so that's going to be all for this video on setting it up this is probably going to be the least interesting one so if you fell asleep in this video fear not the next one will be a lot more riveting so thank you very much for watching this video. Again, all of the project files will be on Patreon if you want to pick them up and support the channel. There's probably going to be four or five videos in this series, but next week's video is going to be rigging. That's coming out on Monday. So thank you for watching and I'll see you then.